We're thankful very much for many stakeholders who have partnered with us over the years, especially the government of St. Lucia through the Ministry of Education, who has consistently provided a subvention to enable us to pay our staff on a regular and timely basis. We have also had support from the private sector and many individuals, the Presentation Brothers, and some overseas agencies from time to time. We are very grateful to invest, we are very grateful to invest St. Lucia, which has allowed us to use these premises at Odsa for the past 16 years at a nominal rental fee. And we sincerely thank the management for the support over the years. Invest St. Lucia, thank you ever so much. I would like to publicly express my thanks to the many persons in the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Physical Planning who gave their time, talent, and resources to make the commencement of this project possible. I know it was a challenge for you as you had to attend to this project along with your other duties in government. I would also like to thank the ILO representative Mr. Dieg, and the steering committee for the program. Thank you very much for all your support over the years. Reaching this point in time and place took a long way. The colleagues from the Minister of Education and Care, as well as the members of the project steering committee, certainly know about this. The project did indeed start back in 2018, and today, after about four years, we can finally celebrate the beginning of the construction of what will be a facility which will ultimately benefit St. Lucia's youth. I will not repeat or emphasize the relevance of the undertaking for the education offer in St. Lucia for the youth themselves. I trust other colleagues and higher authorities will do so. I on the other hand, we'd like to take a couple of minutes of your time to reflect on a couple of elements. First, we are here to initiate construction. Unfortunately, often, possibly even in St. Lucia, when we talk construction, we may also talk about occupational injuries. When we will meet here again in seven months, there will be only one number to account for those and that number is zero. I trust the contractor, Mr. Alexis, the workers, and each of us will ensure this will be the case. Second, I wanted to consider the impact of this project a bit more broadly. Yes, we are building something for the future, but in doing so, thanks to the support of the government of India, we are also creating jobs, local jobs, jobs for youth, which they will hopefully access with equal opportunities and with respect to fundamental labor rights. With the COVID recovery still not at full pace, macroeconomic financial challenges worldwide, and a somehow historic dependence of the islands on tourists, being able to do so is a big achievement. And one we, as ILO, are looking forward to monitor and report upon. This morning is very important, of course, and the community of Castro South East embraced wholeheartedly this initiative of this becoming the permanent home for the establishment of the care school. And of course, we are extremely happy that the, good gov the people of India, government and people of India, has made it possible for us to receive a grant to realize a dream that started so many years ago. As I listen to the presentation made by the chairman, I cannot help but to remind that the St. Lucia Social Development Fund has partnered with CARES for over many years, providing uniform and supporting a lot of the children who come to school under the CARE program. But of course, I want to remind us this morning that on the converse of development for this nation, that this government, this administration, has made it 
its mantra of putting people first. And of course, at the center of all of it is our vulnerable population. And we understand what care is about and who care is targeting. But also on this canvas for development, we are concerned that those kids who would go through the walls of our institution, we also want to ensure that they have the support, the, 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 the ten, this, this, not just the skill set, but the tools that will be required. And of course, this government has pledged support in ensuring that children have access to devices because we understand the importance of having um, laptops, the tablets, and this is why this administration has returned the want um, instrument per student in this country, and this is formidable. In addition to this, this administration has pledged $2.8 million to the St. Lucia Social Development Fund for school support, and of course, the care students have always received support from the St. From the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, and I'm sure that this will provide support to the children. In addition to that, let me speak of our social housing assistance program. I can tell you this morning with confidence, with being seeing it for myself, I've seen children living in this constituency living on mud. And we are currently using the social housing assistance program to address this problem. And this is why on the canvas of development, we support the construction of the institution, but we also provide support to ensure that the children who are coming to school, we know where they are coming from. We know how to fit them, because if all of these assets do not come together, the true essence and the holistic opportunities for education will not be realized. And therefore, the feeding program, the, su the support of, of, of tablets, the, the social housing assistance program to ensure that our children, when they leave school, we know where they're going to. They have some comfort. Our parenting program to ensure that we continue to invest in our children through the support the good, good prime minister has given us. The support for even the, the, the access to additional support at the level of the community where we have our social workers, our, our social transformation officers. All of these assets come together to ensure that care realize and we partner with care so that our children get the support that they need. A Chinese philosopher once advised, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence is increasingly supporting that the promotion of employment-oriented technical and vocational education and training in Tibet is one of the most practical avenues for teaching people how to fish. Research has shown that TVET can help equip individuals with the necessary skills, which will ultimately improve the productivity and efficiency of the labor market and can enhance participation in economic growth and development. It is with this in mind that the Ministry of Education and by extension the Government of St. Lucia has identified Tibet as one of the pillars for national development and has infused, in, infused Tibet into the medium-term development strategy. It is our goal to enhance the provision of Tibet in St. Lucia so as to ensure that all students are equipped with 21st century job skills that are aligned with the current and future needs of the labor market. We are therefore extremely grateful to the government and people of India for assisting with the development of one of our premier Tibet training institutions, the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education, otherwise known as CARE. Drawing on the wisdom of famous Indian lawyer, anti-colonial nationalist and political activist Mahatma Gandhi, education should be an all-rounded drawing of the best in child and man, in body, mind, and spirit. From 1993, K has been providing second chance educational opportunities to many of our country's most disadvantaged and marginalized youth. Their programming embraces the very ethos of Gandhi's vision. It creates, or caters rather, to the mind, body, and spirit. For their adolescent development program, 
They tackle topics such as self-concept, identity, esteem, and other soft skills necessary for the labor market. This, coupled with the provision of skills training and job attachments, has left many trainees and employees speaking very favorably of the institution that has trained them so well. Our government acknowledges CARE's contribution to our island's educational landscape and, it, and its potential in assisting us reach some of our most marginalized young people. It is for this reason, as part of our campaign promise, we stated our commitment to providing greater financial and institutional support to this organization. And in the coming weeks and months, the relationship that has existed with care since 1993 will not only be strengthened, but you will see tangible evidence of a solidified partnership almost everywhere care operates in this country. I want to thank the Indian government, I want to thank the ILO, and everyone who has come together to make this ceremony possible. And this ceremony is significant because care is a significant institution. I remember when CARE started, I remember Brother Dominic, and Brother Dominic, I think, was a, was, was a coach, right? He was a cricket coach, and I tell my colleagues, the same. <laughs> my cricket skills were taught by Brother Dominic, but um, Brother Sean um, sure doesn't want to, doesn't want to believe it. <laughs> But Brother Dominic was a very, a very good coach. And he was a man of, Brother Dominic was a very practical man, a man of God, but a man of practical, of practicality. And when he started the, the care program, everybody said, why are you saying about these people? And the same thing we had today, these people, people who live, and why are you worried about these people for? Why are you living with these people? Same thing, same things we had today. These people, my brothers and my sisters, are human beings. Their parents have this, same aspirations for their children, their parents want their children to do well, and these children, most of them, do well if they are given the opportunity. And what, and what care is given is opportunity. Opportunity for them to give them a first chance, a second chance, even a third chance. How many of us who, who scream self-righteousness? How many of us have not made mistakes? And if it were not for the benefit of our position, our parents, our social status, we would not have been where we are today. How many of us? But we scream and we say, these people, and why are you spending on these people? But care and the board of directors, and so this is why I recognize them, have spent time on these people. And I'm sure they look back at pride with pride and see how many of these people have become men and women and are contributing to the society. In the upcoming budget, right. the government of St. Lucia will increase the subvention to care. Right. But that's not all. We have, this year also, we are going to increase the support that we are giving to children to go into school this year. We're going to increase the support. This, this care institution is a holistic institution. Holistic in that it not only deals with the skills, but it deals with the development of the human person. And I'm happy. And next year, we will be back for the continuation, for the opening of this building. The contractor is there. I want to tell him that we expect the higher standards from him, the higher standards of professionalism and the higher standards of construction. I know he has the capability to do it. The minister, the parliamentary representative for Kashi Southeast has gone in front and asked you to employ people from his constituency. <laughs> he, he has forgotten that the constituency of Kashi is just across the road. <laughs> So I'm sure that the quality of, of, of workmanship is going to be at a high level, and I know that he will produce. I want to thank everybody. Thank Mr. High Commissioner Designate. Could you please convey my deepest 
gratitude to the government of India and your president who I met at COP last year. I want to thank the staff or the Ministry of Education. I know that there can always be, there's always a need for more resources. We always need more resources. And I'm the first person to tell you the Ministry of Education needs more resources, needs more money. The first person to tell you that. But the work that the staff, and once the staff remain focused and understand that it's a labor of love, a labor for the country, that's the focus for the country. My deceased mother taught for 45 years to understand what it is to be the child of a teacher. I understand the sacrifices that teachers make every day. And in these times, it's even worse. The sacrifices that teachers make. And when I speak about people like Dr. Mason, who are in their own way, who are in their own way heroines, people we have to recognize in society, our teachers, our nurses, our policemen, we have to recognize them because they, will, they can never get enough money for the work that they perform. Never. But the labor of love, to improve the welfare of the people, to make life better for people. And I understand the teachers, the staff of the Ministry of Education.